Hello, good morning and welcome to the AM Sports with me, Oriel Kuwampo, for we do have some stories for you today. And we'll be starting with a special report where Ridge Football Club won bronze in the 2020-2021 Greater Accra Regional Football Association Women's Division 1 League. Uh, they did so by beating Ningo Ladies by three goals to two at the Medina Astro Turf. Now, the story of this four-year-old club has been remarkable and we do have more for you in the following special report. Fighting. They have only one defender, but they have people who can keep the ball. This is the Monday kickabout of a four-year-old club, Ridge City FC Women. They're a very young team making huge strides in women's football here in Ghana. They recently finished third in the Division One League, beating Ningo Ladies by three goals to two in the playoff. Today, the job here is simple, and that's to find out what the secret has been for Ridge City FC women and their quick rise to prominence in women's football. Founded in 2017, Ridge City FC women have quickly risen in the ranks of women's football. A team that was set up just to allow women to play football for fun is now in the Division 1 league and were on the brink of being promoted to the Middle League. Red City eventually finished second in their zone behind Army Ladies. But CEO of the club, Cleopatra Insia Nketia, is just pleased that they have provided an avenue for women to express themselves. Yeah, well, first of all, I love women's football. I love football. And then I also love women's football because obviously I'm a woman who plays football. And it's really much about giving women an opportunity to play football. And uh, when I was younger, if I had this opportunity, I'm pretty sure I'd probably be playing football by now. I mean, opportunities were there, but it wasn't like as it is now that we have it and I just wanted to make sure that I wouldn't leave this earth without giving somebody else an opportunity so hence the team uh, we are here we're supporting women's football we're encouraging women's football we're helping women not just with the playing with the management uh, with coaching just anything that gets women into football and also to encourage other people who are watching from the sides that yeah this is something that you can do if you also want to get into women's football head coach of the side Luis Ano Ampafu Jr who used to be a sports journalist with the multimedia group, speaks of the transition from journalism to coaching and also points out some differences between women's football and men's football. With journalism, we sit behind the cameras to talk about what they do on the field, coaching you on the field. Now they talk about you. So uh, it's, it's been fantastic, quite amazing for me. I know very well now. I'm rather on the field and then guys like you are talking about me and all that. So I think uh, that's where the excitement comes in. Fortunately for me, I know some of the things that you're going to be saying about me and how to deal with it. So yeah, so far it's been a smooth transition and I'm quite enjoying it. Uh, with the motivation factor, I believe uh, it's quite tough over here with the girls and you know, everything that happens, all the happenings in their lives and everything, trying to motivate them for games and all that. But uh, I believe uh, it's a challenge that uh, I'm up to. Uh, it's, 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 it's quite incredible. Sometimes you just look at the things that uh, women can do with the game and then you compare it to what guys are doing and then you see the, uh, how do you call it, the gap between and then trying to close it and it feels like a, a job that is quite enjoyable. Uh, sometimes we talk about football being the beautiful game and then who else to play to be more beautiful than people who are classed as beautiful human beings and not handsome human beings. Humble Sarah Ayimedu has had the privilege of captaining Ridge City from its inception in 2017. She's been surprised by their success this season, but even believes they can challenge for promotion next season. It's, it's, very, it's an amazing feeling. I can't really explain it because we never expected to get to that level. Yeah, looking at our, uh, how, how do I call it, the way we play, we, we are not really improved players yet so yeah so looking at the way we play and all that it's, it's very uh, joyful that we made it to the top yeah but we prepared fully towards it all we had to do was to study their opponent during the first time and then see how they play and then we also come into the game and then we make it well uh, the pressure to us next season is to be the winners yeah, not the third position but to win the cup itself yeah, for the team and we are praying that we make it to the Premier League that's the aim yeah a team that sits low in terms of age and experience but when it comes to expectations they should ride throughout the sky this is the story 
of Red City FC women and how they are climbing pretty quickly in the footballing hierarchy when it comes to women's football here in Ghana. They finished second in their zone in Division 1 and ended up placing third overall in Accra. This only leaves us wondering what this four-year-old club could achieve in future. My name is Ore Kwampofo, reporting for Joy Sports from Jolie. Well, from women's football, let's move to the Black Stars as 27 players would open camp uh, this morning to begin preparation for this month's match day three and match day four of the FIFA World Cup. Uh, that's the Qatar 2022 uh, qualifiers against Zimbabwe. We do have more for you in the following report. This follows the decision of the technical team to excuse five players from the squad ahead of the qualifiers. They include Ismail Abdul Ghanou, Tariq Fusu, Alfred Duncan, Mubarak Wakasu and Emmanuel Jesse. Meanwhile, England-based right-back Andy Yadom, who plays for Redden, is currently being assessed after picking up a knock on Saturday during a championship game against Cardiff City. Well, most of these players will be playing for the Black Stars. They start their football from as low as juvenile level. And speaking of juvenile football, Samuel Enum Ado, a member of the juvenile committee of the Ghana Football Association, has responded to allegations made by some stakeholders of juvenile football and charged the juvenile football clubs to appreciate the efforts of the Ghana Football Association. This comes after clubs expressed disappointment about the state of the juvenile league in a special Joy Sports report, which we aired yesterday morning. Now, he was speaking to my colleague Gary Al Smith on Sports Today. This is uh, sometimes when, when you want to talk about it, you will not, if you want to. You, if you look at only your situation, you will not be realistic. Because you are looking at yourself alone and you are trying to say, they should do A, B, C, D for me. Remember, the game has changed. Like, um, I remember you know, was saying that the game, yeah, those days, there were few clubs, the likes of Aslamaji and Co, they were looking for the clubs to even play for. And you are, you will be privileged to play for a team like Gracie, that's all, um, Mighty V12, and there are few in Mamprobi. You understand me? But now it's changed. Everybody is having a club. How are they expecting the FA to fund all the activities? You understand where I'm coming from? So it's not going to be like that. The good thing that we should, they should acknowledge and appreciate is that we are doing, we are doing a lot for them. We are, we are doing capacity building for them. We are we, we giving them new cars. They are not paying for it. As we are not, they are not paying for refugees. fees. Refugee fees alone were killing us. Yeah. On a Thursday, if you are not able to pay for your refugee fee alone, you can lose the game. And some of us, who cry, some of us will hustle, and that refugee was just, if I, I remember, it will, it will be now, maybe, I've forgotten the figure, but you can imagine at that time. So all these things are now not being paid for. Apart from that, the FA has taken a keen interest. For the first time, you see the FA involving ourselves. I was there with the technical director, the FA president, all of us were getting ourselves involved. I think they should appreciate this. Well, in case you did miss uh, the Joy Sports report uh, preceding uh, this response from Samuel Nimado, who sits on the Juvenile Football Committee, uh, well, we did have a reporter, Michelle Kwenu, who visited one of the juvenile football grounds, and he did reveal or discover that, you know, uh, when it comes to juvenile football, districts are being given 1,000 CDs, and a district can have over 80 clubs, so essentially... What that means is that each club might be getting somewhere over 12 CDs from the GFA from the, for the whole season. And a whole lot of issues ranging from facilities uh, to pitches and all that. So uh, they were complaining of the adverse conditions that the children were playing in. And you just heard from Samuel Nimado saying that uh, they should uh, be patient and the Ghana Football Association is trying their possible best. Uh, but let's come back and uh, talk about the Ghana Premier League where Ashanti Gold appointed former Ebusian Draft trainer Ernest Thompson Corte as their new head coach after Roberto Landi, Milovan Serkovic, Romain Falls, uh, Safo Castro and Thomas Dia all took charge of the club in the just-ended season. Daniel Biu, who is administrative manager of the club, has been explaining what went into their decision. It was influenced by a whole lot of factors. 
we took into consideration the philosophy of the club, the player development models we have as a club, the youth development program we intend to follow as a club before making such a critical decision. Our performance last season wasn't all that good. We placed ninth in the league competition and second in the NTNFA Cup competition. Looking at the fact that we have most of our players still in the squad, I believe that their presence will be able to help us build on our performances in the previous season to achieve better results in the upcoming football season. Well, from coaching decisions in the Ghana Premier League, let's head to the English Premier League where Claudio Ranieri has signed a two-year deal at Vicarage Road following the departure of Cisco Munoz, who became the first Premier League manager of sacking of the season on Sunday. Under Munoz, the Hornets won their first game in their top flight, return against Aston Villa, but only managed to pick up four points from the next six games to leave them in 15th position. However, new appointment Ranieri is no stranger to English football, having enjoyed spells with Chelsea and Fulham while overseeing the most unlikely of title-winning terms with Leicester City. The former Chelsea manager's most recent job was with Sampdoria in the Serie A, but he departed in the close season after a two-year spell with the club, having initially taken charge in 2019. Watford who have now hired six and fired five different permanent head coaches since Marco Silva's departure in January 2018, become Ranieri's 21st club in his 35-year career. He will be joined by assistant coaches Paolo Benetti and Carlo Conacchia, as well as fitness coach Carlo Spignoli, as he prepares for the difficult task of, the, of facing unbeaten Liverpool in his first game on October 16th. Well, that's how we wrap up the sports here. We'll be bringing you more sports throughout the day. You can check our social media handles at JoySportsGH on Facebook and Twitter. And then check my Joe online for Sports for the latest in the world of sports. My name is Eureka Wampofo.